rent in it. Um, to do this, what you guys need to know is first off, the head you're going to pull, probably it's easiast to pull the back head just because it doesn't show much. The problem is though, if you're prone to leakers or something like that, it's, it's going to be the head you can't see. That's so a, it's a choice. A, it's a, a choice line. there. Yeah. Um, but whatever you do, the first thing you got to do, don't forget to mark them because even if they're the same barrels, the same manufacturer, there are differences. Not so much now as used to, but you know, this is barrel number one. And then everything is done off the bunk stain. Right, so, so you mark that, that's the orientation of it. I usually mark this, these hoops will stay, they'll stay the same, but the quarter hoops sometime, if we were just doing barrels for use in back, you might put them in a pile, but anyway. The, the hard part, <laughs> the hardest part I think is getting these little key nails out. Oh, yeah, yeah. They love forklift tires. Uh -huh. There's one way you can drive them off just like this. But they tend to they tend to make creases in the barrel. The other thing is once you get them out, these are dangerous. So what's the other uh, choice to pull them out with pliers? Uh, pliers you. Yeah. you can pull them out with pliers. Um, if you're only doing a couple, that's an easy way to do it. But it's slow. Um, you do that, but just be aware, just be aware that these things are low sure you can say it fine. Okay, so I pulled a head hoop, just, just for, you, you know, of course, the head hoop is next to the head, bilge hoop is next to the bilge, everything in the middle is a quarter hoop. In this case, it has one quarter hoop. It could have two quarter hoops, even three. So this is the first quarter hoop. If there was a second and a third quarter hoop, it would be there. The other way to try to pull these T-nails is just to knock the heads of them off. Get your hoop. And you can pop them off like that. Realize it doesn't matter. So you move this now, and what we can do now is People ask what these things are for, and there's there's other ones. These are peens. This gets really old doing this. So you can do this. so that it stays stuck in here because remember you always work off this and it's loose all the way around here. Sometimes after use the head gets so so used to being in here and so jammed in it's like one piece and you start to loosen it and the head will start to split. You know it just starts to split along the board. So to minimize that um, what we can do is knock it loose. So it's a little bit loose now. I haven't moved this hoop yet. Not starting here, start about here. Just hit the same individually. Just lightly. And that'll break it loose. Don't forget these two pieces, the crescent shaped pieces are, are the cants, C A N T. Um, some people spell it. Sometimes these these the stamps that get so glued in as you pull as you as this thing starts to spread, it'll actually split this can and it'll pull it in half. That's not a big deal. It looks worse than it is, but you'll put the head back in. So ideally, as I said, it's loose all the way around here now, but still tight right here. It just makes it a little easier to get the barrel in and out. Now we can start loosening this and how much to loosen this. How tight the hoops are is the key to how easy it is to get heads in and out of a barrel. So this is sort of, you see it's gotten loose now. Do this, there's 
couple of ways to do this. I'm just going to drop it and grab it because it looks like it's going to fall out of here. So we just keep losing it a little bit. I bet that was harder than it looked. It is. You need that look. It easy, is. So. Um, I dropped anyway, it when I tried it. You see what's going on here and you look for things, then you pull that thief that you dropped in the barrel out. You, know, you can do this. If you're going you're gonna to fill this part way with juice and then put the heads back in. Okay. No, we're not no. going to do it that way. We're going to ferment it okay. just like that. Okay. So we're going to put punch, the juice back on. it down. Okay. I know some people do it, what you mentioned, Phil. Then you can, then you can start putting the head the hoops back on. I like to work with a head hoop first just because it's easy. Need the hoop driver. At the start, remember just keep everything oriented. If the barrel is wet, sometimes there's not enough friction here and this just keeps bouncing. You can dry it off the end. This is just, you can buy this, they call this railroad chalk. It's just regular chalk. You can buy it in Art and Steve's. Um, and if it just keeps popping, especially the head, you just sort of chalk that, and that'll increase the friction across there so it won't. And put that on. And then you just drive these hoops back down approximately where they were. When you're using a hoop driver, the tendency is to keep it out like this because you're afraid to drive it down. You get out like this, it hits the wood more than the hoop and it bounces. So what you want to do is have it upright. If you're not sure and you're starting out, you might want to move the wood backwards. enough you'll beat the poop out of it and, and you'll you can break it if it's too loose you get it up in there and then it'll fall back in so it's that this is the judgment call so it's good to loosen it near the bung stave uh, first you know it, you, you know the, this is there. the easiest place to work on a hoop because it's twice as thick yeah. there's less chance of it popping off there and so I just get used to it this is a head tool, and I'll, I'll loan this to you guys if you, if you don't. You can get down to the Central Valley and buy a couple of pipe nipples that are already threaded in an elbow and screw them together. It's a pain, though. They always come loose, and the elbow is a pain to get in and out of the hole. But anyway, here's how the guys do it. Fernando, you can bend steel by hand, right? This is, this is what He's they that use strong. for head tools. He's that strong. This is not what I use. Well, this is uh, <laughs> <laughs> So what we're going to do is, remember, we're working off of here, and you've, you've made your mark in there, so you, know how to, you don't have to put flour paste in it or screw around with that. And what they use is this, to sort of use the handle underneath. And then, you start this way.
that's a little bit too loose. I mean, <coughs> tell you what, when should we grab a hammer and driver just to set that down just a little bit? Moment of truth. Yeah, turn around. Turn, mm -hmm. turn 180 degrees oh, so yeah, your hand yeah, is yeah. against the outside. There we go. Wait a second. Wait a second. More? Yeah. Right. I'm working on you, It's nice because you can see the, the hoop place what we did before. And then pound it up and in. Yeah, you want to try to bring it down evenly and move it around, and then as you get that tighter. Um, and you see that's so close, it just sort of pops in the yard. That was one crazy guy at Alpha Omega that I would watch just whack oh, it yeah. on him. I just, I don't know when you get to that comment. My day, my days are my days of doing that are gone. And so then, remember I said I like to work on a head hoop because you don't need the hoop driver for the head hoop. So it just makes it a little easier to drive. So start that down. Just see if we can set that on there and get it flush with it. Another thing to just a lot of times the head hoop will start to pop. Instead of letting the hammer bounce, uh -huh. push down on it a little bit when it hits. Okay. You're, you're, you know, a little bit you're more of a deliberate hit. Yeah. Okay. You're trying not, not to let it bounce. Yeah, that's it. And you can drive it all the way to flush. In the old days, historically, when all this was done by hand, I remember it was like this. The head hoop was proud. It stuck up about an eighth of an inch. That was a sign, since the, the hoops were all made individually and the heads were sized individually, that was a sign that when it was as tight as it could be, this much left, it was the mark, one of the marks of a good hoop. Um, nowadays, everything's done by machine, so it's perfectly flat, but every now and I see one of those holes, they're all bigger. And Feel that incidentally, this hammer. You feel this hammer. This, if you, you don't need to buy an expensive hammer, you can use. But it's a little bit. It, it flattens out right here. Sometimes yeah. when you're really pounding, you, you know, back here. But it's really nice to be able to hold it about the middle. Yeah. Well, now I see why you're choking up on it. You want that kind of yeah. Right. It drives down. It should be. It should be pretty close. If you're not sure, and you know the barrels might be dried out, and you see a couple of little gaps, and you see that. So what we'll do? Then just set this so hit it right opposite the crows. Just maybe do it. And that just sets it a little tighter on here, and then reset. Sometimes if the barrels dried out a little bit, you might even end up driving it. 